In this lesson, we're going to talk about troubleshooting common printer problems. Before we get going, please understand that there is a wide variety of printers on the market today. And I can't possibly give you troubleshooting tips and specifics for each and every different printer. What we can do is give you some general common printer problems that you can start with. And from there, you'll probably have to go to your manufacturer's website and check out the documentation or a knowledge base or an FAQ specific to the particular printer that you're working on. With that in mind, let's talk about how we go about troubleshooting printer problems. The first thing we need to do, as with all the troubleshooting tips that we've talked about in this course, is to check the obvious first. I'm going to reiterate a point that I've said many times in this course, and that is the fact that about 50% or so of the problems you encounter with printers will be caused by one of the things that we're going to talk about here. The other 50% you're going to have to do a little bit of work. What are some obvious things you should check for on a printer that's malfunctioning? Let's start with the very basic. Is it plugged in? It happens all the time. Somebody comes in, say a cleaning person comes in in the night and is vacuuming and they accidentally knock a plug out or they unplug the printer to plug in a vacuum cleaner and then forget to plug the printer back in. Those kind of things happen. The next thing to check for is, is it connected? If it's a local printer, is the USB or parallel cable plugged into the workstation? If it's a network printer, is it connected to the network? Another obvious thing, but it happens all the time, is, is it turned on? It sounds simple, but it happens. One of the places I worked several years ago, we had one person, we never could figure out who it was. But somebody would always go through and turn off printers at the end of the day. They would think, well, we're going to save money, so we're going to shut off printers. And so they'd walk through, shut off printers. You'd come in the morning, and you'd just assume the printer would be on. You'd go to print, nothing would happen. You'd go and check. Sure enough, somebody overnight had turned the printer off. The next thing to check for is paper. It may be plugged in, it may be connected, it may be turned on, but is the paper tray out of paper? That, of course, would cause the printer to not print. Likewise. Is it out of ink or toner? Getting blank pages, there's a pretty good chance that it's out of ink or toner. Another thing to check for, jams. Is there a piece of paper jammed inside the printer? Usually, depending on the type of printer you're using, there will probably be some kind of display on the front of the printer that indicates a jam. It might be a blinking light. It could be a little LCD panel that says paper jam. Check for a jam before you start trying to troubleshoot other problems. Another thing to look for with laser printers is contamination. This is laser only. The problem with laser printers, and if you start working with laser printers, you'll see that this is very true, is that laser printer toner cartridges leak toner. And remember that toner is nothing more than just ground up little bits of plastic. And it leaks those ground up little bits of plastic all over the place inside of the printer. If that excess toner starts to build up, you can have all kinds of problems. It won't necessarily cause the printer to not print, but what you'll end up with is gunky stuff all over the printouts. If that's the case, you might need to get your little handy dandy anti-static vacuum cleaner and vacuum all that contamination out of the inside of the laser printer. If you're dealing with an inkjet printer, and there are lots of those around these days, is the ink head dry? Remember that an inkjet printer works by conducting an electrical current through little jet ports inside of the ink head, which causes a bubble to form inside of the ink, which forces ink out of the nozzle and onto the paper. Most good inkjet printers have a routine that will clean out those heads whenever you shut the printer off. However, some don't. If that's the case and the printer sits for a long period of time, it's very possible that you could end up with dried ink inside of the nozzles. If that happens, you get all kinds of strange things on your printout. You'll have blank lines or missing colors or things like that happen. If you suspect you have a dry ink head, most inkjet printers have a head cleaning routine that you can run, which will clean out the dry ink out of those nozzles. Another thing to check for is to see if the printer is online. Many problems, such as a paper jam or a out of paper error, will cause many laser printers to go offline, which means they're on and they're still accepting jobs, but they're not printing anything because it thinks there's something still wrong. There's usually a button on the front of the printer that says online, and you can set the printer to go back online by simply pressing that button. If you want to make sure that the printer itself is actually working properly, 
there's another thing you can do, and that is to run a test print. I'm not talking about printing a test page from Windows. I'm talking about running a test print. Now, depending on the particular model of printer, you can have the printer print, do a self-test and print out a test page by turning the printer off and then holding down a certain sequence of panel buttons and then turning the printer on while you're holding those buttons down. Now, the actual sequence and the way you do it varies from printer to printer, so you'll have to check your documentation to find out how. But that is an excellent troubleshooting tool for you. If you run a test print and everything comes out all right, that tells you that there's nothing wrong with the printer. It's working fine. Your problem is elsewhere. It might be a problem with a cable. It might be a problem with a print driver. It might be a user error. All those things are, are the more likely cause now because you've identified that the printer itself works really well. Don't overlook those test prints. Now, with this in mind, we need to talk about some more serious problems. If the problem that you're having with a particular printer does not respond to any of these fixes, then we might need to start looking a little bit deeper. Let's look at some common mechanical problems that occur with printers. Before we talk about these, please understand that most mechanical problems that you encounter with printers are probably things that you can't fix. It's nice to know what the problem probably is, but with most printers, you're going to end up taking them to an authorized service center to have them fixed, especially if it's under warranty. If the printer's under warranty, then you don't want to be tearing into it to replace a mechanical part because that will void most warranties. If you're having a serious mechanical problem and the printer's under warranty, take it to a service center, have them fix it so you don't end up voiding your warranty. Something you can fix yourself are parallel cable problems if you're dealing with a parallel printer. With most modern printers, you need to make sure that you're using a 1284 compliant cable. Remember that when we're dealing with parallel cables and parallel printers, older parallel cable and printers tended to be very proprietary, meaning that you had to buy your parallel printer and your parallel cable from the same vendor because printer manufacturers like to tweak things here and there to get a special feature or add performance or whatever. And because they did those things, most parallel cables would not work with printers other than the ones they were designed to work with. So, if you're having problems getting a print job to the printer and it's a parallel printer, one of the problems could be a non-compliant 1284 cable. If you're dealing with a non-compliant cable, replace it. They cost about $15. It's not worth the trouble. Go out and buy a compliant cable, plug it in, and see if that fixes problems that you're having. In addition, check your parallel port settings in your BIOS. Remember that the 1284 standard defines five different parallel port modes. Most BIOS manufacturers actually only include two or three different modes. However, you do need to be using the correct mode for your printer. Check your documentation. And if your printer says, I need to be using EPP mode, which is very common for printers, and you've got your parallel port set to ECP, it could cause problems. Make sure you're using the correct port mode. If you're dealing with a USB, printer, you won't have as many problems, most likely, as you have with parallel printers if you're talking about cable connections. The one thing you do have to watch out for, however, is a too long of USB cable. There are some USB cables floating around that go beyond the standard length that is allowed. And for some printers, it will work. For other printers, it won't. Remember that you should stick within the specifications. A general rule of thumb to follow when dealing with USB printers is don't let your cables get over around 15 feet. And in my opinion, even that is too long. If I'm dealing with a USB printer, I would keep that cable down to around 3 feet. No longer. If your cable is 6 feet long, don't get up tight. It'll probably work fine. Just understand the shorter the cable is, the less crosstalk you're going to get, the better signaling you're going to get, and the better your performance is going to be. With that in mind, we need to look at troubleshooting printer driver problems or software problems with printers. Everything we've talked about up to this point has been mechanical or hardware problems with printers. And those things do happen. The more likely problems that you're going to be dealing with as a PC technician, however, are going to be problems with printer drivers. Let's talk about those next. If you're troubleshooting a printer problem and have identified that the printer itself mechanically seems to be working just fine, the cable's fine, the printer can print a test page just fine, 
then you need to start looking at driver problems, printer driver problems. The first thing you need to do is try printing a test page from within Windows. That will reveal a lot. If the test page fails to print or if it prints incorrectly, but the printer itself is fine, that's a pretty good sign that you've got a problem with a printer driver. So what causes printer driver problems? This was a very common problem a few years ago. It's less so today with Windows XP. It can still happen though, and that is using the wrong driver. Back in the Windows 95 and Windows 98 days when we were dealing primarily with parallel port type of printers that were not plug and play compatible, it was very easy for the end user to, when they're setting up the printer, to pick the wrong printer driver. They might say, well, it's an HP printer. OK, I select HP. And then you're like, well, which model? If, if you ever look at the list of models available for Hewlett Packard printers, there are so many of them that can be overwhelming. And they say, I think it's a 4100 or something like that. And they pick 4100 when, in fact, it's not a 4100. It was a Model 4. In that case, they have selected the wrong driver, and you will get strange output. If the user is sending print jobs and it's printing out postscript text, that's a really good sign that they're using the wrong printer driver. Now today with Windows XP and plug and play compatible printers, this happens less often because when you plug in that plug and play printer, the printer identifies itself to Windows and the appropriate driver is loaded automatically for you usually, and hence this is becoming less of an issue today as compared to a few years ago. It still happens a lot, however, when you're dealing with network printers. If you set up your network printing environment correctly, and that's a topic that goes way beyond this course, if you set up your network printing environment correctly, then the correct driver should automatically be downloaded to a user's workstation when they connect to the network printer. However, a lot of folks don't set up their print network printing environment correctly, and they rely on the end user to pick the driver for the network printer. And because it's a networked printer, Windows does not know what kind of printer it is. Plug and play no longer helps us anymore. And so the end user still has to pick the right printer make and the right printer model to get the right driver installed on the system. And that's where you run into problems still with the wrong driver. Another problem that happens frequently is a corrupted driver. I shouldn't say frequently. It happens on occasion. From time to time, a driver file for a printer can get corrupted. If you've got a hard disk that's going bad and it's getting some bad spots on one of the platters, and that happens to be where your printer driver is stored, that can happen. If you have a power surge that causes stray data to be written to your hard drive, it could corrupt, again, a driver file. And finally, an outdated driver. We've talked about this so many times in this course, and I hope that you understand that you need to use the latest drivers for your devices. Printers are no exception. Go to your printer manufacturer's website, see what drivers are currently available, and compare them with the version you're currently using. If the version on the website is newer, download it and install it. It might fix some of the problems that you're having. Again, the list of problems that I have presented to you here is very generic in nature. When you're troubleshooting a specific problem with a specific printer as a PC technician, more than likely you're going to need to go to your printer manufacturer's website and look for a knowledge base or an FAQ where you can look up problems and resolutions known to have happened with their printers. If that doesn't work, you can also go to Google and search for your problem. More than likely, if you're having the problem, somebody else has had the problem too. The internet is a great resource for finding resolutions to common problems like this. That's it for this lesson. In this lesson, we talked about troubleshooting common printer problems. We talked about checking the obvious first. We talked